in. In an effort to um, separate out my other hobby stuff from the electronics, um, I have had a peek in here, and I believe this will either be Timu or AliExpress. I am not sure yet. I'm guessing Timu because I rarely order this much stuff from AliExpress anymore. So, I've got some news. When I started this channel, I thought if I could con all my kids into subscribing, I might get five subscribers. To my surprise and delight, I've just hit a little over 250 subscribers. Um, and I've got to thank every single one of you so much for that. Um, now, I have ordered some digital vernia calipers from Timu, and I've bought these particular ones before, and I'm very happy with them. I use them in my workshop all the time. Um, now, I'm going to be giving a brand new pair of those away, a lucky dip if you like, when I hit, when and if I hit 500 subscribers. Now, unfortunately, due to the cost of postage, I can only post within Australia. However, if someone overseas does win it, and the postage is prohibitive, I will either arrange to have one sent to you directly from Timu, or I will um, send you the equivalent in funds for you to buy one from Timu. So that's a little bit exciting for me. Also, I'm going to start changing the format up a little bit from the next video. I've bought some studio type lighting and also a much better camera. They will make an appearance next time. So for today, let's have a look what we've got. Oh, I will also be trying to do more in-depth on these mailbags. Now I say trying because as many of you might know, I have a brain tumour, it's my third, and it makes my memory erratic. But, well, yeah, that's the goal. Okay, who's this from? Oh, okay, it doesn't tell me who it's from. But I do know what it is. It's actually a a set. These two things came and were purchased together. This is a Wi-Fi enabled ESP32 module. So a, a Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller. And this is an adapter board for it to make um, programming it easier. So I will take this out of here. Oh, 
I'll tell you what, it's getting pretty warm down here in Victoria, Australia. Although we are in summer, so I shouldn't be surprised. Scissors needed. <clears throat> it's good to see that this has been really well packaged. I'm very happy about that. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So, this is the ESP32 module. This is the adapter board, and these are the connectors that come with it. So what happens is when you want to program it, you just pop the 8 header. Sorry, let me hold that up so you can see that. The oh, the A header pin there. Sorry, you can't see that probably. The new camera I'm about to use has autofocus, so I'm hoping that will hold that. We'll fix that. So, and it just oh, plugs in there like so. And that becomes a unit. Put this away back into its protective anti static bag. I've never had a uh, microchip get fried or a transistor or anything get fried by s um, static, but you now there's always a first time. I actually have an anti-static mat on here, and I must up uh, for here, which I must remember to put in. Okay, actually, I think I'm going to use scissors. Let me bugger off. Okay. <laughs> grouse. Okay. God, I'm showing my age saying grouse, aren't I? There are two of these. I'll only open one. Gee, if I can get the bugger out. Seriously. There we go. Now, I'm not going to peel the cover off. These are round displays. And what they are for, I've ordered two of these because I am about to try a project. Um, well, just because I'm a nut, I guess. This is Brian. Hello. He has a brother, Bruce, over in the other corner. Now, what I plan to do on one of these is drill out the eyes, pretty much the whole eye socket, mount these displays behind it and put animated, lifelike-looking eyes in there. Then I'm going to put a sound actuator into it and a servo motor so that when someone comes in the room, the eyes light up and, and this sort of goes, what the fuck are you doing here? So that's what they are for. And this will be a project encompassing a few videos, I would think.
excuse me while I put this back, if I put more things back, I might be able to find things, alright. <laughs> I'm looking forward to using those for a bit of fun. The biggest change you should see on the new video is better light quality with the studio light. Hmm, what have we got here? All of these things I will show you the listing on, I think it's probably Timu where I bought them. Regardless, wherever I bought them. What the devil? Somehow this bubble wrap seems to have fused together. God, I hate trying to cut bubble wrap. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I apologise for how long this is taking, but I am technically semi-paralysed on my left side, so yeah, I do the best I can with what I've got left. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, there's nothing funny about it. This looks like it could also be another display module. It is. This is a little seven segment, three digit display counter module. I'm about to do a whole series on and have a big play with uh, these seven segment displays. So that's why we have that here. Oh. I best put my other eyeball module away. I don't think they were particularly cheap. Oh, and as you can see, it came with the little header pins. Not that it matters, I've got heaps of those. Okay, what do we have next? Transistors. God. Terribly packaged in a plastic bag, so I'll be very lucky if half of them aren't fried. I will show you the seller so that you can avoid using them. Um, where is my magnifier? God, I'm hopeless at putting stuff away. Let me have a look over on this one. Oh, I know what these are. I always see American makers using N2222 transistors, which are apparently the most commonly used NPN transistor over there. Here we use a different one, which I think might be the 8505, but don't hold me to that. Anyway, I decided to get some... Um, double two, double twos, just for the hell of it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's have 
a look here. I don't recall the name of these types of connectors just at the moment. I do have some others somewhere, but pretty stamp half of the course around here. I can't find them because. I never put, well, almost never put things away properly, which I'm trying to change. Jesus Christ. So, you can... Hang on, let me see if I can get you closer. Ooh. So here you can screw in two wires and here you have a, I think it's a 2.51 millimeter male barrel jack. Just makes it easier to connect power and I am going to want these in particular for my animated skulls when I get to them. Okay, let's see what else. I am so looking forward to having better lighting and a self-focusing camera. What do we have here? Oh, more stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is another one of these LED rings with addressable LEDs. I've got a fair few variations of addressable LEDs and apart from the ones that light up underneath my desk I haven't really played with them so this is a um, well not sure if you'd quite call it a kit um, here's a, yet another one of those little programming modules from the ESP32 and another Wi-Fi ESP32 which I'm not going to unpack and they're going to be a set and uh, lucky last for this envelope This is my uh, oldest son and I started sorting out a lot of my cartons that haven't been unpacked since I moved. Anyway, I found a whole bunch of old remote control batteries and I didn't really have a... Um, an easy way to charge them. I mean, I could have charged them up from my benchtop power supply, but I couldn't easily find information on safe current rates and it has no overcharge protection. So I bought this. This is USB-A. 
to whatever you call this plug, which go, plugs into the batteries. And this has a charge controller built in, so it will prevent overcharge and that sort of thing.